Hi everyone, I'm Tom and today I'm going to be playing Call to Adventure. This is a game all about taking fantasy characters through their story, basically through their journey in three acts and the cards that we will collect, the challenges we will face, will tell the story of their adventure. As always, I recommend you turn on Klingon subtitles. If I've made any mistakes, they'll hopefully be noted up there. This game is being played. I'm, I've chosen Call to Adventure. Well, I didn't choose it. It was voted for by supporters of the channel. And if you would like to help keep the channel going and have a say in the videos that get filmed yourself, then the Patreon page is linked in the description and on the screen up here. Isn't that convenient? Uh, what else do I need to say? Uh, oh, there! if you're on the handheld camera, there's a static camera if you don't like shaky cam and the other way around, uh, high static cameras. Let's get started. So this is the solo version of the game, although Marty is helping me out here. Uh, this is also the way you play it cooperatively. So if you're interested in that, then it's the same, but with more people. Uh, if you're interested in the competitive version, then John Gets Games and Rado both did uh, wonderful playthroughs of the competitive game. So what changes is... There are adversaries mixed in the Acts 2 and 3 decks. There doesn't have to be. They're kind of an optional extra that come in the box. You choose a random adversary, get rid of all the others, and they are your big bad for this game. So I am fighting against the Crime Lord in this game. The Crime Lord has basically... The Crime Lord is going to win the game if he ever gets this much experience in front of him. He also has a special quest that gives us some special rules. So he gets plus two to his difficulty. Whenever I gain this mask symbol, which is on some of the cards, the adversary is going to gain experience. So I want to kind of minimize that. But whenever I gain this uh, justice symbol, you take one away from the adversary. So I can balance it out that way. He also has a deck of anti-hero cards that will get played at various times. And these are basically the nasty anti-hero cards from the base game. Only the ones that mess with other players. That's all the adversary has. So, this is my character. I am a conscript, I'm a seeker of truth, and I have the blood of the dragon. So, this would normally be secret, but we're all friends here, aren't we? So, we can see what this is. So, the conscript card here, my Act 1 uh, starting card, gives me some symbols here that I can start with. They give me some skills to start the game with and give me some benefits. And you can, static cameras, can see the sneaky rulebook maneuvering as I desperately try and remember the names of all of the abilities. Well, I know that's strength. This one is constitution. Uh, so yeah, rather than just referring to them as the colors, I'll try and remember to uh, call them their names. So makes sense. As a conscript, I would have strength and constitution. So on your turn, the main things that you are going to do are get new cards from this display. You can also play your hero or anti-hero cards. Which ones you can play depends on where you are on this uh, alignment meter here. At the moment, I can play either of them, but I only start with a hero card. And gain a card from here. I can spend experience to journey, basically discard a card and draw a new one if I really don't like what's out here. But one thing that I've seen here, I'm a conscript. I can enlist in the king's army here. This is a, a challenge that I can do, the call to arms challenge. I can either enlist in the king's army or defend my homestead. So here, I could get myself some more strength. And you, know, you want to get a load of the same symbol to help you out. So this is something that I could do. I could just gain, you know, these things with difficulties here are the challenges. I could just gain a trait so I could be studious or an orphan. And this would just get me some points and an anti-hero card. Uh, Studious would get me some symbols, and making sets of these symbols is worth points at the end of the game. And it is worth me being aware as well that you know, to fight the Crime Lord at the end, I am going to need charisma and dexterity. Those are the two things there that, uh, that would help me out fighting him. And if I am corrupt then I get plus one against him. So this is the very last thing that you do in the game, though. The very last turn is spent fighting the adversary. So I think to start with, let's enlist in the... Let's do the call to arms challenge. So you pick a side of it, because on some cards, one of the sides will be more difficult. So I will pick... I think I'll pick enlist in the king's army, because that's a point as well. This justice symbol is nice, but I don't have any experience to take away from him. So now we need to gather our runes. You always get the three base runes here. And this is, you know, instead of dice, you kind of throw these runes up into the air and what they land on is uh, whether you passed or not. So this side is successes, the, the strip there. And on the other side, they have either nothing or that is draw a hero or anti-hero card. In the solo game, though, that makes the adversary draw one as well. 
So I get these three base ones, and then if you have symbols that match the challenge that you're taking, you take one of those runes. You can get extra if you uh, have more than one of the symbol. So you want to make sure it's a normal one and not the special one, because that's the one you get for having a lot of the same. So I get a normal strength and a normal constitution one. The special one has the, the dots on, uh, around the symbols on it. So I have these. And you can, there is a little table in the rulebook that helps you work out your odds of uh, whether you get a success. Because if I you know, flip these over, the ones that I've just gained, and I, they land on their sides of strength or constitution, they count as two successes. I need four to succeed in the challenge. I think I've got a pretty good shot here. What I can do, though, up to three times, I can cast Dark Runes by spending experience. And Dark Runes have a chance of giving you more successes but also can make you more corrupt instead. Now, that that's counts as two successes, but it also puts you on a more corrupt track. And that can be worth points. You know, these, these black and white points are points all the same. Uh, but yeah, at a certain point, you will start losing a lot of points if you get too corrupt. And you'll lose the ability to play hero cards, which I, I could play. Now, if I overcome a challenge without using dark runes, and my result exceeds the difficulty by at least two, I could get three experience. So I think that's at least worth trying, isn't it? So where should we do this? Let's do it off to the side here. So uh, mix them all up nicely and just flip them in the air, go everywhere. And I think I've got a really good result here though. Wow, that is two, four, six, seven for my four challenge. I have succeeded it by at least two. So I'm gonna play this hero card because you can play it after you overcame a challenge without using dark runes and the difficulty exceeded by two. So I can tuck this in here and I've got a point now for the end of the game. So I succeeded in this challenge. I tuck this under with the side that I chose showing. So I'm getting another point and now I have another strength. We refill the display and normally it will be the next player's turn, but there isn't a next player. So now I'm tempted to do arcane ability well, I'm tempted to do the magical test to get sorcer Sorcerer's Talent here because that would start to give me the charisma to maybe beat the Crime Lord. And nothing else particularly appeals to me here. Just that I need a four difficulty. So basically all of this goes back. I only get to do the three normal ones. I think I'm going to throw in at least... At least one here. Now, I could do Studious first, which would help me out in getting Arcane Ability. But in each act, you only get three cards. Oh, you may only gain this if you, ha if you already have uh, Intelligence. That's what the magic wand is. You can only gain Studious if you already have Intelligence or you spend an experience. Now, I was going to spend an experience on Dark Runes anyway to do this. So maybe it's worth doing that. Yeah, I'm going to... I'm going to spend an experience to get Studious first. So this gets tucked in here, and it's basically, I don't have to do anything for it. I've just got myself an extra card. And what comes out here? We have an ally. Now I can make a challenge more difficult, and then I will gain this ally. This ally gives me extra constitution until the end of the turn by spending experience or sacrificing the ally. I don't want to make arcane ability any more difficult, because I don't think I'm going to be particularly good at doing it. That just gets tucked under there. Allies, same as adversaries, are optional extras. You don't have to include them in the game. We have Adventurous here, where we could get another Constitution. And I could just get that, because I already have a Constitution. But that doesn't help me in the adversary fight, does it? We're going to do Arcane Ability. So we get an Intelligence, our three base ones, and I'm going to spend an Experience to get a Dark Rune. And then let's... Just uh, let's see what we get. And we get one, two, three. Oh, we didn't do it. Oh, no, that's a shame. So I didn't get more corrupt, though, on the plus side. I do draw a hero or anti-hero card, and I can play either. I think I'm going to play... I think I'm going to get a hero card. So I get Unlikely Alliance. Choose another hero to gain sons. You can add their runes to the next challenge. I think uh, the card, this card isn't relevant, is it, in a uh, single player game? So I think we'll, we'll ignore that one for now unless I can do the thing on myself. Play this before you attempt to challenge, add an extra strength 
or triangle <laughs> to your attempt. That would be good for the boss. Boss wants triangles to defeat him. As you may tell, I have turned away from the page that tells me the names of all the things. So now, we've drawn one. We need to reveal the adversaries. Top one here. If any hero failed a challenge this turn, and I did, gain an experience. So, there we go. Five means the adversary wins. He's got one right now. Now, unfortunately, th this isn't as bad in a solo game, because now it would mean you lost and you, you didn't get a card this turn. You stay in Act 1 until you do get the card. But, you know, in the solo game, I'm not fighting against anyone here. Well, in the co-op game, you're not fighting against anyone, but it is one of those co-ops where it's like, if you defeat the adversary, everyone wins, but the person with the most points won more. One of those kind of things. So what's come out? I could get... Now, this would be nice. A nice set of three strength would be really good for my rune ability if I prepare for war and then build fortifications. Because getting your third rune of a certain type lets you use the special one. And the special one's got, you know, a, a really nice thing on the other side of it. So that could be something to do. Let's put these back. Adventurous would be the second of something. I, I want to prepare for war. So I get my three basic ones. I get two strength. And the intelligence from last time. So that's a lot of runes. I only need four successes. I'm not going to do any dark runes here. And if I fail, I get uh, two extra things. Oh, you do get an experience for failing, actually. So I have one more experience. And I could add another sword to it. I think I'm going to save that, though. Yeah, let's go for this. So let's... Uh, <laughs> do we shake them? Let's just see how they tumble. So I get two, four, five, six. Brilliant. But we now need to... I think I'm going to have another hero card. So, another surprise attack, that's quite nice. But the adversary... Play this after another hero has attempted a challenge. They must attempt it again, and now it has plus one. Okay then, so we, it's the exact same things. Oh, that's frustrating. So now we need five, and we got a really good go at it this time. I'm trying to kind of jiggle them around just in one hand. Let's see how they tumble down. I think that's still okay, isn't it? One, two, three, four, six. We needed five. Uh, another card? I'll have another hero card. And so this is inner strength. Play this before you attempt to challenge. Add an extra strength or constitution. That really works out for me. He has instill fear. Play this as another hero is attempting a challenge. They must choose another challenge or trait instead. Uh. So we are not preparing for war, unfortunately. We're going to have to do something else. So we could, this is something we need. We would just be really bad at doing this, banish a ghost. Need three successes. I would want gain a spirit guardian though, because it has the, the charisma symbol, which makes it one more difficult, which makes it really hard to get. I think I might just duck out of all of this, <laughs> kind of frustrated that I didn't get my, the card that I wanted. Although if we fail, then I could try this in the future. Yeah. Let's go for Banish a Ghost. I'm not going to do any dark runes or anything. I don't particularly care if we... Or we would fail, wouldn't we? With, uh, with three. So yeah, let's do this one instead. So what do we get? We get two and a card. Let's get an anti-hero card. There's Bend the Rules. Play this during a challenge you're attempting. Choose a rune and flip it over. So that's something. And then his card is Play after another hero has attempted to challenge. They must attempt it again. Okay. <laughs> It's going to keep me failing this thing. And we get another card. I have another anti-hero card. Parting of ways. Discard and replace one revealed challenge or trait. Gain plus one to your ch next challenge attempt this turn. Uh, I haven't played that, though. He gets harsh lesson. If a hero failed a challenge, gain an experience. So that's annoying. Because now I've failed and he gets his second experience. He just ended up in a loop, didn't he, of succeeding at things. So now... We lost at this, so we discard it and the ally. Reveal a new one. See if it's something better that I really want. Now, Secret Royalty doesn't help me get my third strength, but it helps me get 
the charisma to maybe fighting the crime lord. I'm going to do that. I'm going to discard one of these surprise attacks because to gain it, you have to spend an experience or discard a hero card. I'm going to do that. I'm going to change tracks and discard that and get secret royalty. Because ideally, I would like three charisma before the end of the game. So now, I've taken three cards. You can see that I've filled up my first act section of my player board. This still gets refilled, but in a solo game, it doesn't really matter. You could see some more cards. Childhood Friend. That This is the only challenge, so it has to go on here. Make it a bit more difficult. But you would get an ally if you succeed. And we have Foundling there. So now we move on to Act 2. We reveal all of the Act 2 cards. And there we go. There is a Justice one. The, the murder mystery up there. Now, if I did the bottom side, the adversary would gain an experience. But if I solved the mystery, I would get the justice symbol and I would gain one from him. So that's something to think about. We have strength up there. We have another charisma down here, but it's another one I would find quite hard to do. So we just carry on. So I, I do have something. Oh, OK. I think we are going to do this. We're going to do the Savage Beast Challenge, which is a four difficulty. So I get my base three. I do have a charisma, so I can add that to my rune pool. Once per turn, I can spend an experience to gain plus one wisdom, I think this is. Yes, it is. I can gain plus one wisdom, which is what I need for this. So I feel like... I feel like now I'm in a pretty good spot. Yeah, I think... Do I want to spend my last experience on getting a dark rune? I think I'm in a good spot for this. I'm going to do Soothe a Savage Beast. And I want four successes. Oh, what have I got? Oh, there we go. Two, four. I don't draw a card, so he's not getting in the way. Brilliant. So we slip this underneath because we want to see the bottom of it poking out. And I get myself a hero card as well. Oh, could I have played a good card there and got something? Flip a rune over, get extra runes? No, I don't need any of that. Let's get an anti hero. Oh, no. I don't get a choice in this one. Just thinking, in the future, I need to draw anti-hero cards because I get a point for each one left in my hand at the end of the game. I also get a point for each charisma and constitution that I've got. So, we'll come right in arms, give another hero experience. Uh, there's no other hero, so I don't think that one applies. So, gain two sons or choose another hero to gain a son. That could be good later if we end up really corrupt because we might want to be corrupt to kill him, but then play this so we don't lose a load of points. Could be something to think about. So we have the informant. Uh, where do we want this? I don't think... Did that one be okay? It would give me the sneakiness. That one's got the justice. That one's got the strength. I think we'll, we'll put it over here. I'm not going to do this one. Because the informant's got the, the sneaky symbol as well that would gain him experience. So I don't want that. I've inventive. I've spent 2 XP to get that because I haven't got those symbols. It would get me an anti-hero card and another intelligence. So do we go for the third strength here and lead an attack? Or do we go for murder mystery? Now for murder mystery, I would have an intelligence and I could spend my experience to get the wisdom again. And then I would have a wisdom for the future. I don't particularly like any of these though, to be honest. I think we're going to go for lead and attack because at worst it will it'll do nothing, but it might give me my third strength, which would be nice, wouldn't it? That's uh, that's not the basic one. There's the three basic ones, and I get my two strength. There we go. So I need five difficulty. I'm going to go for lead and attack, and I could get an extra strength. Yeah, I will play this to get an extra strength, which gives me the third strength, the special one. Like on this side, this is gain an experience token if this side comes up. So I need five successes. Let's see what we get. Two, four, six. Boom. That's done. We get this crown symbol. Another hero card and another strength, which means I permanently get all of those strength symbols when a strength check comes up. Unfortunately, strength isn't helping me against the crime lord. Hero card is Glorious Victory if you overcome... It's the one we had at the start. Overcome a victory by at least two without using bad things. Adversary should have been removed from the deck. 
someone wasn't looking carefully enough. Okay, we have Delve Into Darkness there that's got another constitution. It's also got this one though. What, which one's that? Oh, dexterity. So dexterity helps if I can get that. And I can give myself more constitution, can't I? No, I haven't got that card. I think it was the one I just played. This one gives me dexterity though. Yeah, I think this would be a good one to do. So we're going to do Delve Into Darkness. So my base things, I get my three base runes here. Well, I want to do Perilous Dungeon is the challenge, and I'm doing the Escape With Treasure part of it. So that's three runes. I can use Constitution and Dexterity. So I'll play this card so I can add a Dexterity, Surprise Attack, and it's a point. All of these cards played a point. So I've got a Dexterity coming. That's Dexterity. Then I have a constitution from the start. Do I want to play anything else? I can flip a rune over if it goes badly. Yeah, I think I'm happy with that. And if I overcome it loads, so I only need four. If I overcome it by loads, I can play that card and get uh, a load of experience. So, okay, let's see what we get. We get one, two, three, four, five. No drawing cards or anything. I flipped that over myself. Uh, so there we go. I delved... Oh, I, I escaped with treasure successfully. And so I get an anti-hero card. What's this doing? I didn't succeed by two, did I? So I can't play that one. Although I could. I could play an anti-hero card. Yeah, I'll play an anti-hero card to flip a rune over. I'll flip that one over. Now I have succeeded by at least two. Didn't use any dark runes. So I can play this and I'll get three XP. There we go. That's quite nice. So the new anti-hero card for taking the, the challenge. Desperate Rage for each uh, tragedy in your story. That's these black bordered points here. For each tragedy in your story, gain plus one to your next challenge attempt. So I do have one so far. Yeah, if I dealt into darkness, I would have another one. But uh, yeah, I didn't. So this is act two finished. So I have some more symbols here. Oh, I need two hands to organize this properly. <laughs> what have I done? So, Sue the Savage Beast should go underneath. There we go. I think we're just about seeing the right things on there now. Okay. So, let's put the runes back away. And we need to reveal a new card, but it doesn't matter because I can't have any of them. We have to move on to the next stage. So, where are we? We need to reveal these threes, don't we? So we have the Witch's Den. I could get an Intelligence or I could get a load of Tragedy, which you know, could give me a load of plus ones. For my challenge attempt at the end, I could play Desperate Rage at the end and get a load of plus ones if I get a load of Tragedy points. I think it helps get Intelligence, Tragedy points, uh, Champion of Light. Yeah, they're, they're not so good at getting your symbols towards the end. See, none of these are particularly great. I think out of any of them, I would do this one because I'm quite strong. It doesn't give me any tragedy points. I think that we'll get rid of one. We'll play Parting of Ways, discard and replace one revealed challenge or trait, and gain plus one to your challenge attempt. So I'll get rid of this one, see if something better comes along. Uh, advise the King. Oh, this one would get me. Oh, no, it doesn't. It gets me an intelligence. The other side is Claim the Crown. And I do. This would be my third one in a set. Oh, I think we might have to go for this. Although, could we get something else first? We could try and get another intelligence first by defeating a witch or extinguishing a fire. I think, though, we've got plus one. Now, we could still spend experience to try and get something better. And let's spend one to journey, get rid of something we don't want. What don't we want? The witch's den, I don't think we want. Let's get rid of that one. And then we have Banish the Fiend. That doesn't really help either, does it? No. One more experience, I promise. We won't spend any more. One more. So I'd like something that gives me some more charisma or dexterity, really. Now, this one you need charisma to be able to do. And it would get me a load of tragedy. It would be six difficulty, though, and I'm only allowed one uh, charisma. But what if we get a plus one, so I get my three basic. We could actually clear these cards out, couldn't we? And 
have a bit of a cleaner space for the static cam at least. A bit of a cleaner space to flip these runes in now. There we go, isn't that nice? You can see all of the bits of uh, the little flakes of cardboard that have come off the cards. So we get that, we get a charisma, and then I get plus one. I'll spend an experience to get a dark rune. So we need six. I haven't got any flips or anything like that. Okay, let's see what we get. That was all of them. So I get two, three, four, five, six. Oh, wow, I just made it. So I go down here. It doesn't change any points or anything just yet, but if I go down again, it'll mean I can't play hero cards. Uh, so this goes under here as a point for the card I played. We just managed this. Why did we want this? Uh, I think for all of the tragedy points, that's really going to help me uh, get some plus ones at the end. Because that's another tragedy in my story. And that's the second one of that symbol that's come up, so that's not too bad. What do we have here? Call for mercy. Here we go. This is the symbol I want. Yeah, we're doing this. Heroic rescue. So we want... Now, either way, justice gets me an experience off him. But it's harder. So we have... We only have one experience to spend. We have the, the base ones, we have the charisma and the dexterity, and we need six for the top one, seven for the bottom. I think we get an extra point for the top one as well, and it's a bit easier. Although the justice gets me an experience off there. I think we, we're dark ruining it. Last experience on a dark rune. So we need six. We're calling for mercy in this heroic rescue. So what do we get? Two, four, six, seven. Could have done the bottom option. Unfortunately, we go down here, although we do gain points, but we cannot play Deny the Darkness anymore and uh, make ourselves really, really uh, virtuous. I do get another Dexterity now, though, and two points, and a hero card that I can't play. So it's all good. I could have played that before if I was worried about that. Because, yeah, I've got another one now, so I could go all the way to the top, but I can't play that card. Although, if I do have... I am a bit corrupt, so I do get plus one against the Crime Lord, which isn't a bad thing. His difficulty is, at the moment, eight. And I get plus one towards him. More if I get some more tragedy. Because there's one more card available to get now. What are we going to pick? So... What do we have here? I could get this. Supernatural. It's another tragedy. You can only gain this if you've played a load of anti-hero cards, or if you have... Constitution and Dexterity. I do have those things. I don't need that symbol, though. I think advising the king might be a good thing to do. It's very difficult, though, the king's council thing here. It's eight difficulty. It would just get me the third crown symbol. So two of a symbol gets you two points. Three of a symbol gets you four points. It's not a huge deal, is it? It's not loads of points. I think we would be much more successful at getting... Another Constitution is a point. That's three points. The symbol doesn't get us anything. But it would be a lot easier to do because I have strength and constitution. Yeah, let's do that. Let's go for basic ones. Can't afford a dark rune. We don't get dexterity or that here. So I get all three of my strength and I get my one constitution so far. And if I fail, I get three experience instead of just one. So I need... Let's see. Even with the extra point, though, it's probably better to bring down the giant. It wouldn't let me roll more things. But I d that symbol gets me nothing, you see. So this would get me three, four points. This one gets me five points. So I might as well go for the bottom one, although it's harder. Yeah, let's go for it. Eight difficulty. And let's go. Well, one came out of my hand a bit early. Three, five, six. Didn't do it. Didn't, wouldn't have done either, either one. I get a card, though. I'll have an anti-hero card. Uh, play this during a challenge you're attempting. Choose a rune and flip it over. It would be great if I could play that now, but uh, I've already attempted the challenge. Maybe he can uh, play this after another hero has attempted a challenge. They must attempt it again. Brilliant. <laughs> that helps me out. Uh, and now I get to flip something over if I want to. So thank you very much, uh, Crime Lord, <laughs> for making me do this again. Uh, so now I get two, four... Six, 
seven. I can flip something over. I'll flip over this one so he doesn't get to play a card. Two, four, six, eight, and an experience. That's what this one is. Boom. Uh, that gets played, and I get a point. Uh, I have climbed the Colossus, and I get myself another strength. So that's going to be five more lovely points. Oh, that's another one I can't put underneath. <laughs> Bear with me. Oh, actually, all of that was a massive tease for nothing. I don't get this card. I don't get to have played it. The adversary didn't do any of that stuff because your last turn... Oh, I've just tucked all this in as well. Your last turn has to be to fight the adversary. So that, uh, that Colossus can remain out there. We have the Crime Lord with difficulty 8. I get my base runes. Which means I don't have this experience, do I? Oh, this is going to be... This is going to be tough, I think. Don't know if we're going to actually do this. So I have the three basic runes, and then I have... Oh, I have three! I didn't know I had three dexterity. Oh, clever boy. <laughs> three dexterity, that's a, that's a plus then. Three dexterity, and I have one... No, that's charisma, and then one dexterity. Okay, that's, that's better. I do have a bit of corruption, so I get plus one. And I'll play my Desperate Rage. Now, in your story, doesn't include the anti-hero cards, unfortunately. So it just gives me, for each tragedy I've got, which is just the one here, it gives me a plus one. So I've got plus two against the challenge. So he basically doesn't have this plus two. I need six to win. I can't adjust this in any way. So it's all on the drop of these runes. So let's see what we get. Two, four, six, eight. 10. Boom. Crime Lord is thoroughly defeated. And that is going to give me four more points. This is my last card. It has to be your last card in the solo game because otherwise the adversary wins. He's not defeated. I played this card, so I get a point. And so now just if this was co-op, we would count scores or, you know, if it was a competitive game, scores are all that matters. But we will solo here just in case you're wondering how many points you got or if you're interested in the competitive game and stuff so first of all you count up your triumph and tragedy points so in terms of triumph i have one five seven not a lot then tragedy points i have five not a lot experience i've got none hero I played one, two, th three, four hero cards, all with a triumph each. I played two, three anti-hero cards. Story icons, I got two crowns, so that's two points, and two scrolls, so that's two points. So I get four points. And so my total is 12, 16, 23, a terrible, terrible score. But I was willing to try and defeat the adversary in the first place. And so now the thing that you can do at the very end of the game is you can look at uh, the story of your hero's life. So basically, so he's a conscript, a studious conscript who is actually secret royalty that enlisted in the king's army. It all actually fits in quite well, doesn't it? Uh, uh, he's a seeker of truth that uh, led an attack but then went on to soothe the savage beast rather than fight it and escaped with the treasure. Uh, then uh, he had the blood of the dragon, was tainted by magic. He called for mercy and defeated the crime lord. That is the story of our character's life. That's the story of Marty's life in this fantasy world. I think that's a pretty good story, really. Uh, but there we go. That is a solo game of Call to Adventure. I hope that gave you a good idea of definitely the solo and co-op version, but a pretty good idea of the competitive version as well. But you would be uh, a lot more inclined. Like, I, I probably should have paid more attention to looking for symbols and things as well. If we were playing a co-op game and we were really bothered about the, you know, uh, one of us wins more than the others, then that's probably not a great score to go out with. Anyway, though, this is just an example. If you would like to know what I think about Call to Adventure, there will be a link coming up very, very soon. If you would like to help support more playthroughs like this and have a say in what gets filmed in the channel and get your credits come up in a minute and badges, all sorts of beautiful extra things, then it would be lovely if you could head over and check out the Patreon page, patreon.com com slash slicker drips or if you just like to click a link there'll be a link in a minute i'm going to go to space now bye everybody